So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, last Tuesday, we discussed about the design convention. And then during the lecture, I introduced about the design analysis during the, the conceptual phase. Um, today, I introduce one of our analysis, which is a site. So when you start your design, the project, you have to be know about your site condition, where you see your site, and then what is about the soil type, and then what is about the contour type, and then what is about the, some JSON, the context around your building. So we have to be considered about the, these or information to design your project. So when you see the, this first image, this is a control map here. So what kind of information you can find out from here? So you can see the slope, you can see the peak point, and also you can find out the water level. So this is a kind of information you can track the, some the site information from the, this, the site map. So today we will learn to read and anal anal analysis the control map and then draw the section from the, this map and also we study about the foundation and also we study about how you can just getting the information about the soil. So first we discuss about the site analysis. It is the initial design statement of the, your design and also effect to your the design direction. So when you see the left image and right image here, so left image you can see the the initial site analysis sketch. So it means this is your site here, and you're understanding about the where is the your intersection, which is the two, the public transportation system is stop here. It can be main entrance. So also study about the view. So where is the great view for the your design? So it means it can direct the some opening direction and opening orientation. Also it can be the main elevation because it's kind of open to the the green here so means this area this facade can be the main elevation of the, your design and also indicating about the pedestrian passageway how the person and people can access your building so basically from the this research you can deciding about the building orientation and you can deciding about the facade design you can deciding about the main entrance of your design okay the light one is more master plan design you also understanding about the, where is the the high traffic area and then where's the secondary road and then where's the pedestrian and also understanding about the different color code representing the different zoning the which one is the commercial the which one is open space and which one is the residence and which is the more grace the, the institutional program so basically from the distant master plan the site analysis you can deciding about your the project the the direction further so I bring the some one the example. So this is a completed the pavilion on the open landscape, and then right image you can see the initial the analysis analysis sketch. What kind of a site research on this project, and how you deciding about orientation and design basically from the this site analysis. So we are looking at the, this project, and how we analysis the your the site. The, from the, the following step. First one, you have to be know about the climate condition. The where is your building located? And then, the what is about the sun pass? What is about the wind pass? What is about the sensory part? And what is about the season? So from the, this building, you can see the sun pass, the summertime sun, and then wintertime sun. So it means you have to be getting the sun energy as much as possible during the winter, and you better to the avoid the summer sun so it means you can deciding about the some canopy design basically from the this the summer and winter the path also you have to be know about where is the wind coming from this is a winter wind here right so winter wind is coming from here so it means you better to the block the the winter wind so it means it's much better to design in the retaining wall to protect the this winter wind but it is much better to getting the summer wind because summer wind is more ventilating the air and getting the more breathing into the your the building. So that's why avoid the winter wind and getting the some summer wind. So basically from the this research, so you can see the this retaining wall totally block the winter wind and getting the summer wind is promise can be open to the the 
this side. Okay. And next consideration is slope and vegetation and hydrology, which is where the water it is, and utility and the boundary. So you can just simply understanding about the, this part here. So you can see the pavilion locating on the hill. So this is understanding about the, the slope. So it means this area, it can be the open because it can be the summer wind is coming here. And then also this is slope and then locating the peak point and then get it guaranteed a better view here. And also you can see the auto view here, the actual car is coming here. So it means it's much better to closing down here and then much better to open the view to the nature. Okay, so that's why I consider about this one here. This is a viewing area for the this pavilion design. Next consideration about the traffic, the where is the car is coming from, where is the bike, where is the pedestrian coming way, and also understanding about the functional event, what kind of event can happen in this location, and then changing use in season. So the event can be varies depending on the time and depending on the season. So from here you can see the the traffic, which is a car traffic here, and then major view from the auto view is here. Okay, this is a pedestrian, and then you can see the auto view here. So it means you have to be considering design the your the pavilion properly, basically from the this the approach and then the connection from the pedestrian, connection from the this main road. Also you have to be understanding about the accessing point from the parking. Cars park and the people access from the this way. So it means how you can design in the this corner the accessing the pedestrian from the this parking space. This is all your consideration to designing the some this pavilion. Okay. So next one you have to be considered about the regulation, which is law. You have to be know about the where is your site property, legal ownership, and you hope you have to be know about the easement. So do you guys know about what is easement? The easement is the legal right to use someone else's land for a particular purpose. It's mostly public purpose. For example, the municipal water company may have an easement to run water pipe under your property. So it means this is your property line, but you have to be connected to this public switch from the neighbor. This neighbor have to be connected to the water pipe through the, your property to connect to this common the pipeline. In this case, they have to be using the public, have to be using the pipe under your the ground within the, your property. So, but you have to be using the, this pipeline. It is called easement. So legally right to using the someone else's land for the public purpose. So this is what we can call the easement. Okay. And of course you have to be keeping all dimension and also keeping the allowable uses. What is about the allowable uses? It is called zoning. So we talk about the zoning next year, but zoning specifically defined where is the commercial area, where is the residence area, where is the park area. So park area never built on the commercial space or the residential space. The residential zoning is never allowed the commercial here. So it means the city actually deciding about this location. We have to be meet the this the zoning requirement for designing the your project. Okay. So from the this region, it is the last of a different site consideration when you start your design. So it means site analysis is very important to deciding about your design direction. So that's why before starting your design, you have to be know your site better to design your project in the right way. So next one you can see this is a site survey. To know that these the site analysis information, we need site survey first. It is performed by professional site surveyor. But you have to be know about the site surveyor is inspection of area where work is proposed. Your site survey can determine the project location and access and best orientation of your habitable space. And then you're also understanding how your building to connect to the infrastructure like a switch 
and electric and different kind of uh, the public infrastructure. Um, especially, this is a more about the legal thing and responsibility issue. The site the surveyor have to be higher from owner. It's not higher from architect because it determine the many different architecture aspect architecture design from the site survey if site survey is long your all your design have to be changed during the construction period you know what i'm saying so it means you have to be avoid this uh, responsibility the problem of this region the owner have to be hire the site surveyor and architect using the this site survey information to propose your design so it means site survey and architect have to be separate means to avoid the responsibility for the site survey part so site survey mostly you can use in you know, this tool to know about the size about your property to measuring the neighbor building footprint the different the site measurement the tool are used for the site survey but nowadays though we use the GIS a lot what is GIS it is geographic information system GIS is mapping system to capture store and the graphic display of geographic information for analysis and presentation we can have all possible geographic data by using the, this big data system. So this is a software. So when you open the GIS software, you can find out the where is the main, the, the highway is coming, and then local road is coming, where is the infrastructure is around. And then also you can show to the demographic information, also introducing about the footprint about uh, your neighbor. There were lots of different information you can find out and then you can use this information for your design. Of course, even you having the GIS, but when you having a specific site, you have to be higher, the, not you, the owner have to be higher, the site surveyor to survey your site in a specific way because the GIS never having a legal the responsibility. The owner have to be have more people to guarantee that this legal responsibility from the this region they have to be hire the the site surveyor to survey the land and then we use the this information to develop in your project further but before hiring the this site surveyor the initial phase gis giving the lots of information to build up the your the project idea okay so let's watch the following video. It is introducing about the GIS. I think this video helps to understand GIS idea better. So let's watch this video together. Okay, and then we can jump into the next topic. A geographic information system uses computers and software to explore the fundamental principle of geography, that location is important in people's lives. GIS is used to inventory, analyze, and manage many aspects of the world. When you flip on a light switch, chances are a GIS helped make sure the electricity was there. If you drive down a highway, Chances are a GIS managed the signs along the way. And if you look at a map on the Internet, chances are a GIS helped make it possible. A GIS takes the numbers and words from databases and puts them on a map. Much information is tied to a location, and a map shows patterns in the data we might not otherwise see. GIS allows you to use your existing data in new ways. Putting data on a map helps you ask questions like where, why, and how, with locational information in mind. With geographic knowledge, you can make better decisions. 
With the vast sources of information available today, GIS is a key tool in determining what it all means. GIS can make maps coded by values from the database to help illustrate patterns. For example, to better understand traffic accidents, we might first group collisions by police grid, then as hotspots. Finally, we can show where citations are issued. Another look at the same data can show accident locations over time. GIS provides location-based solutions today for government and industry around the world. So next topic is the topography. So how you can read about this topography map. So it looks very complex, but you can find out all different information from the, this data. So you can see the where is the railroad. So I can indicate in here. So where's the railroad? And then where is the river coming through? And then where is the highest point, which is a peak point? And then where is the town? And also understanding about the height of the some each level here. So you can just kind of track the lots of different information from the one single certain topography map here. And then this the level actually coming up from the feet above the sea level. So you can see the heavy line here. The heavy line is a major contour. So it might be every five feet, every ten feet, and every hundred feet. So depending on the some scale of the your the map, it has the berries for the this heavy line the major contour. So you can see the some section how you end understanding about slope and how you can track the the sectional quality from the this contour map. I think everyone mostly already know how you actually draw the this the section from the this contour map. So let's see the some sectional quality from A to B. So to know about the, this section, you have to be cutting out from A to B, and then you just simply track out. So you can just simply connect it from here to here, and the each line. And then you already know about the height here. The level is 20. The this level shows the 30, and this level shows the 40, and this level shows the 50. Simply you connecting from the this plan to the section. And then you connect to the line between. Okay. So then you can just getting out the some actual contour, the some section from the your contour line plan. Okay. So now you can just understanding about the where's the steep slope, and then where's the gentle slope. You might have better understanding about the your the the site condition. So also you can understand about the slope, how you calculate the slope. The your slope can calculate the light divided by the lawn. But what is about the lawn? Lawn is horizontal difference, light, the height difference. You can see the light here, this height difference, and lawn is horizontal difference here. So when you get in the slope from this point to this point, the light Divide by the lawn to getting the slope. Okay, so example, if you have a 20 feet light, this is a 20 feet light, and the lawn is about 100 feet, so it means you can get in a 20% slope. Okay, so when you get into this, when you extract the sectional line from the, your contour line, you can calculate this slope. Okay, please remember about this calculation. The problem with this calculation, you can, you understanding about the, some contour line. So some contour map is very tight, and the, some contour is very loose. But some contour is a, the following the this the contour line. So what is about the condition in the tight contour space? What is condition in low loose contour spacing? What is condition of a path parallel to the contour? The tight contour system. It is more steep slope, right? It's slip steep slope because about the the this is a very the high slope here, right? 
but it's about to control loose control spacing it is more gradual slope it is more like that okay now what is about the pass parallel to the contour it is provide the cross slope which is making the you can design in the passageway in this location so just kind of from the this contour map you can extract where is the steep slope the where is the gradual slope the where is the cross slope so i just also think about the requirement for designing the slope for your design so now you don't need to be memorize everything However, I just ask you to memorize these three slope ratio. So X sub root max, which is the when you're designing about the lamp, the lamp maximum ratio have to be 1 to 12. So it means 12 is here and the 1 is here. So you can just find out the slope here. So this is a basically from the wheelchair access. But we pure the access sub root but it is not a lamp you can keeping the 1 to 20 is much gentle slope right but if you want to designing the parking space which is designing the parking lot this parking lot have to be less than 1 to 20 slope okay so i think basically understanding to calculate your slope from the your the control map and then you have to be applied this information to decide about this the accessible route and then accessible route which is not a lamp and then the parking design so next topic we talk about the grading what is about the grading process the grading is necessary for most job locating the slope area when you build your project on slope area you have to arrange your earth before construction. The grading is the work of ensuring a level base specified slope and the possible construction work such as foundation, landscape, load, or utility. So this example, of course, the maximizing building area in the property line. So means grading one more time, you have to make the buildable surface before starting your construction okay so means you have to be making a buildable surface from the sloped area you have to be work some you have to be the earthwork to prepare to make the this buildable surface so let's give you some example so this is your project site you want to build up the project here so what is about the first step for the grading you have to be cutting out the earth. The dash the line is original slope. But to make a flat and buildable surface, you have to be cutting out the, this the earth, right? So it means making out much the buildable surface from the cutting. So this is a cutting means removable soil, okay? And then you can see the bottom part. It's the dash the line here. This is the original slope original contour line but to making the buildable surface you have to be filling the earth here to making the buildable surface it can called fill just remember about the what is cut and what is fill okay so after that you have to be altering the contour line so means you already cutting the existing earth you fill the earth from the existing contour line but this existing the this fill and cut line have to be back to the original contour line so means have to be altered the contour line to provide the the continuous contour line for the, your site okay after that you have to be considered to design the solid line is the retaining wall here so you're cutting out here you're cutting out this location this is the original contour line to connect to the this cutting line by the this thick red line together okay and then also this is the original line you're cutting out here you're cutting out here and then you just simply continuous line to here this lead line okay so this is kind of an example how you actually using the this existing contour line and after grading 
the after grading work have to be the connect to the this existing control line. So after grading, you can see the this the all buildable surface. So means now it's kind of good to work for your construction after the grading. So once again, we just kind of explaining about the, this lead line here. So after the con after grading your existing earth, you have to be connect the existing control line together. So that's why you can see from here, we using you know, this lead line to connect the each the existing control line together. So you can see connecting these two and connecting these two area and then connecting these two area and then connect this area and this one too. So just kind of consider about this existing contour line and then after grading you have to be making this continuous line. Then some part, this is a major the cutting line here. So it means lots of uh, earth pressure you have to be the retained out. So it means you can use the retaining wall here. So retaining wall the protect earth pressure. So even when you design your building earth and then you're designing about the, the retaining wall here. So having the sloped area. There's a lot of earth pressure coming from here. So that's why you have to protect this earth pressure through the, this retaining wall. If you fail the, this retaining wall, this earth actually the spilled over the your house. Okay? So that's why so this one, the retaining wall is very important to propose in this location. So you can see the retaining wall. I just draw out the section here. So you can see the section looks like the gray is the building. The retaining wall located here is protected this earth pressure. And also you can see the grading have to be included in the property line. So it means every grading have have to happening everything within the property line. And after completing all grading drawing, your contour adjustment have to return to the original line on the property line here so you can just do the you can have in the grading within your property line but this is a different word this is a different land so means your contour line have to be back to the original point this the brown point means have to be confirmed it has to be returned to the original point okay And also, this is a very important it's a balancing cut and fill. What is meaning about the balancing cut and fill? So when you having the grading, you remember you have to be to cut and fill for making the buildable surface. So means we highly recommend you have to be balancing cut and fill out because when you cut the ground here, earth, you have to be dumping out uh, some this earth out of your site. But instead of uh, instead of the wasted uh, this earth outside, you can use in the this cutting earth to the filling earth here. So it means when you're having the hundred percent the balance between the cut and fill, you don't need you don't have any waste. You can preserve the nature, and you can also reduce the loss of uh, the construction cost. Because if you have more fill needed, then you means you have to be the bring the earth from the outside. So it means having uh, some transportation money and then the earth money, they have another construction charge happening. That's why you have to be much better to the balancing between the cut and fill when you construct the grading. So this one is kind of showing to the overall section from the these, the after grading work. You see the retaining wall, so this is we can call the retaining wall. You can make out uh, this build over site. And the dashed line is the original, the contour line. You see the cutting and the filling. Try to balance out between the cut and fill, and then every line, the beyond the, your property property line have to be back to the original contour line. So we talk about the what is about the grading process, and the why grading process is important, and then how you understanding and process your grading work. So let's talk about the soil physics. 
The soil physics is the study of the soil physically, the property, and the process. It is applied to management and the prediction of the earth. The bearing capacity is the most important fact for the construction. Because when you're choosing the, your building, this is your site. You want to build up the, your building here. If your soil is too weak, your building will collapse. You have to be find out the strong soil to build up the, your project. How you find out that this the strong soil? So you have to be the following the some step. So I just introducing about the, this step, but just kind of basic concept to find out the better soil for your project. So first image and third image you can compare. The first image is in like a triangular shape. It means it's more friction between the earth. But what is about this one? It's everything so called. It doesn't have any friction between the particle. So it means more friction means more capacity to hold the weight. Also, these types about the earth we can call it cores. It can call the cores. It means it is easy to drain the water. It means it is much easier to water out from the site. What about this? It is usually contain the water and moisture content and the water content. The water and moisture is our enemy. So it means we have to be take out the water as much as possible from the your surface and from the your earth. So that's why the drainage capacity and the friction capacity these types of the stone is much better for your soil selection. But how you can find out the, this type of soil? You have to be following the soil test. Soil test performed from the geotech engineer. The once again, site survey, including the geotech engineer, have to be contract from the owner. It's not contract from you to avoid the responsibility. Okay, so I already talked about this one. Uh, geotech engineering, so they hire by the client to perform the testing and provide the geotech report. They just simply the getting the sample from the site. They making out the research data to provide the civil structure engineer and architect. So using the this geotech engineer, civil and structure engineer provide proper the foundation design and then we're using the, this information to designing about the, your the project properly okay so just kind of remember about the soil test performed by geotech engineer they hired by the client and the using the this data civil structure engineering proposed the foundation design and architect using the, this data to designing underground or overground condition so how wh how you can process the, this soil test? It is called soil boring test. I think this is also very important to memorize it. Soil boring test. It means getting the soil sample from the from the earth. So geotech engineer usually using the this drill and the getting the hole, and then just getting the sample from the this hole. They usually deciding about the pure location of your site. They just usually draw the, this kind of grid line. Well, of course, in the invisible, invisible grid line, choosing the some location for the boring test. Okay, so they're just getting the sample from here, the following the, this boring test. And this is a section of the boring test. The earth usually composed the various layers. It means composite with a different earth material. So getting the sample out of the, this, the boiling test, they just getting the, this type of sample from the top soil to the bottom soil here. So after getting the, this sample, they have to be provide these types of the analysis document here. How you can read about the, this document? You can see the different hatching style representing the different soil type here. So each one have to be locating about what types about the some earth they consistent, what kind of uh, earth is locating this location, and what kind of earth locating this location. So people just kind of see architect engineer just kind of find out this, 
and then to deciding the where is the most computer soil for the, their project. And you can also see the depths here. So you can see less than five feet, it is the clay, gravel, sand. And then 10 feet is fat clay. And then you can see the 20 feet, you can find that the limestone. Okay. And also you can say about the, some capacity and strength test about the, the, the soil and using the this information civil and structural engineer to deciding about the foundation type and foundation design the from the this test so you can usually find out that these five different the soil type the rock and bedrock of course is the strongest the stone for considering about your foundation is ranging from the very resistant to the the crushing to vulnerable to the point the road and the very solid bearing the sand and gravel it is good bearing which is easy to the water out from the your the soil this is a coarse gradual it means you remember about the last of friction can happening from the this layer what about the clay is fine gradual it's more about uh, these things we talk about it this earth particle so it means it's usually holding the water and moisture it's poor the bearing capacity and there's no friction between that's why the earth is not stable. The silt, the behavior like a sand or clay, depending on the grain size. So it's good to for the bearing depending on the specific type. This silt, like a sand, it is pretty good bearing capacity, but silt like a clay is much smaller particle. It is kind of a similar as the clay here. It's kind of poor bearing capacity, also holding the last of the water. Organic layer is kind of a growing layer. So it means usually we can call the top soil, which is located on the top of your soil. It means it, it can be good for the vegetation. However, it is never happening for your the foundation design because it's very weak soil. So you can just find out the actual bearing capacity from the this soil type. Of course, some rock here. This is a capacity is very high so it means more weight they can the support but you can see the fine sand or fill so you can maybe much lower the bearing capacity so that's why when your structure engineer deciding about the, their the, your building weight they have to be choosing the proper the the building the soil capacity to hold in the, your project now we talk about the foundation. When you find that the computer soil, so now we time to design the foundation. What is about the foundation? It is the lowest supporting layer of the structure. It transfers the load of the structure to supporting the soil. So you can see that this one, this is a most primitive foundation we can find out from now. So this one actually from the, the structure, which is the building above. And then the bar, the this is the ground level. You can see the earth condition here, and then this stone, it is the our uh, the foundation here. This stone actually support the the building weight, and then also transfer the load from the building weight to the earth. So this is a more about the transferring layer between the building and the earth. So you can just kind of find out that this foundation design. So usually building can the categorize these three part super structure substructure foundation so this is earth layer above this level we can call it super structure below the earth we can call it substructure and then the bottom of the building it is called foundation okay so there's two different foundation type, deep foundation and shallow foundation. What is different between two? Shallow foundation, for example, when you have in a very strong soil, right below the foundation, I can just count out. So you find that this foundation is very solid. In this case, you can just using the foundation location here. So this is called shallow foundation. However, if your 
found the soil is not enough to hold in your the building. That's why you have to find the computer soil. You can find the computer soil is here. Okay. In this case, you have to be concerned about the deep foundation using the file. Okay. So you just kind of a understanding concept of the shallow foundation and deep foundation. So we talk about the, this the foundation and footing design next year one more time. But now you just understanding about the, these three parts of your building: superstructure, substructure, foundation. Superstructure is the over the ground. Substructure is below the ground level. The foundation is the always the the bottom most place to hold in the building and it is also transferring the load from the building to the earth usually getting the load from the top to bottom to the foundation this foundation disperses the load to the earth and also remember about the shallow foundation and deep foundation shallow foundation if you find the computer soil right below foundation you can just make in the foundation there it is called shallow foundation but if you need to find a more compacted soil deeper than your foundation, you can use the file to making the deep foundation to support your building. So I just kind of interesting about the different foundation type from here, steep slope here. So first one, set elevation on set elevated on the field. So means this is a sloped layer. But your building want to everything floating over. To support the, this floating structure, you have to provide this file. Okay, this is we can call it the cantilever, and then floating over from the ground. It means you can minimize the the construction on the nature. It means you can minimize the damage to the earth. It means it minimizes disturbance of the ground the plane. Okay. But mostly we can do that this way. You have to be using the, the grading works. So you remember about the grading process, cut and fill, and then you just design the retaining or support the earth's pressure, which have to be designed in the foundation here to support the earth's pressure from the bottom to top and top to bottom. And of course you can do sometimes design in the what about the this kind of cable looking space. In this case you have to be considered about the retaining wall the sustain the some earth pressure from the side and also understanding to design the foundation to support the earth pressure from the bottom and also have to be designing about the ceiling condition to support the earth pressure from the top so next one is moderate slope similar as the steep slope here so first modular slope type you can cut and fill which is great grading process to making the buildable area to making out the this retaining wall to the resist resist the earth pressure and then you can just see the point load here they just kind of floating over the your structure and then just kind of a, you can preserve the this existing slope line here If you have a more flat slope here, this is a also similar. So if you have a flat slope, but if your building locating on the beach or across the water, usually we want to protect the water damage. In this case, you can your building can floating over. In this case, you can use the, this file to floating over the, the ground level or over the water to designing the your the house. So also you can use the pillow T. The pillow T is the building, but you want to build your project over the ground level. You have to want the floating over it, right? But without the column, you cannot make out this floating architecture. So that's why we're designing about the, your, the column. And then people is can just move around your under under your the building. So you can see the under section. You can see here like that. This is your building. But you want to more about the people can moving the under your canopy. So you can say you need to be designing about the, this piloty column. So you can ask, you can call this part is piloty area. So it means people are much easy to access right under the, your the building massing. Okay. 
also to avoid water damage during the flooding so it means you can sometimes you can use in the earth pad so it means elevate the, your the building just using the, this earth it can be elevating the earth and means you can avoid the water damage as well okay so I think today we discuss about the foundation design also we discuss about the how you can find out the proper soil type the what kind of a soil you can use and you might consider for your construction and then we talk about the soil boring test to get in the soil sample and also we talk about the grading process and also we need to we talk about the site analysis so today is more to discuss about the fundamental knowledge about the the earth work which is foundation design we of course we have to be keep more keep talking and keep the learning about this foundation design next year so but today just understanding about the more fundamental idea about the, your foundation design so i upload the the lab too so please find out your lab and starting about your new lab from today okay thank you guys